Honesty, absolute honesty. Not only in the sound, but in the way that we operate. That was, you know, when I first went and visited Function One and actually saw the reality of it and saw it was just an absolute passion project of people just dedicated to it. We love good sound. We love creating good sound for people to enjoy, to get that shared empathy on the dance floor in a listening experience. And that was something I just had to be involved with. Well, we're making speakers for people and people have a very sophisticated way of hearing things. There's two things to think about, which is the difference between listening and hearing. You know, so some people listen to music, some people hear music. Listening is an active process where you're, you're focused either for pure enjoyment or some kind of evaluation. Headspace is really important because sometimes you're listening for very, very small impairments or small differences. And when you're listening for very, very small differences, you need very much more attention and much more focus. And that kind of naturally leads you into a flow state, some people call it. One of the hardest things was to just listen to a, a small band of the audio. That took a long time to learn and be completely comfortable with it. Don't want any kind of distractions going on around. Tony has an amazing ability to listen through distractions and other sounds. I can't do that. I very much need preferably total silence to really get small differences and small details because it takes a lot of focus and a lot of attention. It's about paying the right attention to the right thing at the right time. I'm listening to snares. This is just one small example. Is the snare pointy like this? Is it coming at you as a very pointy, immediate thing, or is it blunt? And that's a good way of evaluating a lot of things. And there are tracks where, shall we say, the clicks and the edges are really, really precise. And they're the ones that we use for evaluating how good the transient is. For me, listening has been completely present in what's been presented to you. And for me, the best way to do that is to be in a very calm environment with good acoustics and good sound. I feel when I'm listening at my most honestly, at that point, that's when my mind relaxes. I feel most connected with the information, with the music mostly. I'm taking in that information in a very pure way. When we're working, we're always listening. When you're listening as a sound engineer, it's the same gears going round, but it's a different goal rather than if you're listening in a personal environment, sometimes you have these these real genuine responses. It's what we're all about. Kind of in a semi-meditative condition. It is it's a meditation. Everything else around you stops existing and you stop having thoughts. It's just a direct connection to the music and it's why we do this. So to enjoy that with other people. I'm just looking like I'd be looking at the sky, except it's inside my head. It's my internal eyes. So I'm seeing what colors and shapes I'm getting out of that audio. You have to engage emotionally and then you'll become a good listener. Both ears and microphones have a diaphragm and they both convert acoustic pressure to electrical signals. There's some very big differences between them. The frequency response of ears are different in basically every direction around you and your brain learns that and then it can use that to help you determine where a sound is coming from. And most crucially of all, there is a brain and a person attached to the ears rather than a computer. The more I've learned about how we hear and listen, it's utterly impressive. It's amazing. And that's even more reason why the quest for good audio is worthwhile. Anything that sounds comfortable and relaxing is a good thing. It's actually a lot about feelings as well, of course. And I think from a listening point of view, and certainly from a timing point of view, you've got to be listening to music that's actually got a proper pace to it, that's got a rhythm. I really appreciate how Tony kind of drills down on groove when it comes to certain pieces of music, when you're designing speakers and setting systems up, where you've got these pieces of music which are so inherently groovy and have got such an inherent, like, energy to them, they pretty much sh should make you want to dance. There's not an awful lot you can do about it. There's going to be a little bit inside you that's going to want to dance. And if you know that piece of music really well, then it only really starts to make that effect when everything is lined up right, everything is coming through right, and everything is coming together properly. 
What we look for is the best possible sound, not necessarily by what you measure, but by human standards. Humans don't listen the same way that microphones do. All of the development of our products, there are hundreds of hours of listening behind it. All the way through the development of the product, it is listening. It is absolutely key to what we do, and it's we, we pride ourselves in it. It's a lot nearer to that ideal than it's ever been. In fact, we've got more life in the speakers now than we've ever had. I once thought there's no point in making the best sounding speaker in the world if no one hears it. Right, you know, if it's only some one really rich person that can afford it, there's no point for me. It's got to be out there so everyone can hear it and enjoy it. That's where the true enjoyment of music comes from, is sharing it with people. It's like you're finding whole new swathes of territory inside your own head. It's quite exciting. It's got to be a pleasure. I mean, the world wouldn't look right if your colour spectrum was out of balance. Well, the same applies to sound. I want to be hearing some space, you know. I want to be transported. That's what it's about for me.